Welcome to the totally awesome fishing show. We're down on Hailing Beach. Not great weather, but not bad either. We're going to give you a few tips on basic beach fishing. Now then, I've got a rod and a reel here, and as you know, we're not sponsored. It's one that Mike has borrowed, got given, picked up, who knows. It's not the greatest rod and reel I've had, but it will give you a good idea if you're going beach fishing, the do's and don'ts and the practical basic tips. Tip one. That's to find a fixed spool reel because you will learn to cast easier with one of these than you will with a multiplier reel. When you do get beach fishing properly, if you really get into it and you want more distance, a multiplier reel will cast farther. But the downside is it gives you bird's nests and tangles. They are a nightmare for beginners. They put more people off than the worst storm you could ever have. This is a real cheapo fixed spool reel. It's a freshwater one, but as you can see, it's a bail arm, just opens here. Now, when you cast, Two or three tips, screw that up nice and tight so that the stalk doesn't move at all. When you go to cast, you're going to cast using your index finger as a trigger. Now, you can see the roller and the bail arm here. I'll turn it round. This is the bail arm. When that opens, the line can spill off like this. So, obviously you close the bail arm, but you should put this little knuckle, think of that as a trigger, level with your finger. So you can just put your finger around it, open up, Retain the pressure here, and then as you go to cast under the maximum pressure, just release the finger here, this one, like a trigger. Bang, and the line comes off. But this line is not good enough. It's fine for catching the fish we're going to be aimed at, whiting, flatties, anything off the beach on the south coast. That 12 pound line, but absolutely useless. Now there's a biggest problem youngsters are going to get is with this reel. Now when you go sea fishing, you're fighting two things. That's the wind and the size of the waves, both of which, if they're in your face, are going to stop you casting. So for sea fishing, you need a pretty big lead. Let's just say, as a beginner, you want to start with, say, a four ounce lead. Fine. If you try and load this rod up and cast really hard, even though it's not a great rod, with a four ounce lead, you will break this line. A, you lose your tackle, you lose your fishing time. B, it's really dangerous. So we put on here heavier line, 40 odd pounds, 50 even if you're going to be casting really hard and that's called shock lever. Wind that down so you can see it. I've made it, there it is. Just there, let me show you if you can zoom in on that one. There is the 12 pound line and there is what I join it to. I've only done it basically as an instruction. Normally I'd trim that down a bit smaller. You can even melt these little tag ends with a lighter, that's what we used to do. Some people actually whip over the top so it's nice and smooth for going through the rod rings. And there's my shock leader, that's 40 pounds there, so I've gone from 12 to 40. Make sure you get at least three or four turns around that reel, like that. So that's the gripping point. Then you can cast really hard and get out where the fish are, into the wind, behind those big waves, using, I would say, a minimum 40 pound shock leader. But, as I say, you need the leads. Let me show you the different types of leads you can use. Now, that knot I'm using is called an Albright Special Knot, and I tie it because it's a nice long cylinder knot. You want to tie those if you can. There are a variety of other ones. If you look in beach fishing magazines and stuff, you'll find different knots. That's the one I use. If you want to see how to tie it, look on our part one, how to tie fishing knots. Totally awesome fishing show on YouTube. Part one has got that, and part two has loads of other knots as well. Okay, on the lead situation, let's say these are all about three or four ounces. You can have them up to six ounces if you've got a good enough rod. Say something like a Conaflex, which is a proper full-on beach casting rod. Now, you can use a plain lead. We call these plain bombs. As you can see, I've got aluminium all over me from working on some new rod rests, and we've just rushed down to fish, but never mind about that. There you go. That's a plain bomb. This one is a grip. Now, if you have strong tide or a lot of wind, or you're fishing in a storm, in normal conditions, this one will probably hold bottom. If it doesn't, if it starts getting a belly in the line, you're not fishing properly. Anchor it down with a grip lead. Now these grip leads have little springs on them, wires, I'll just put those down, so they pull into the sand, like this, they dig into the sand, but when you want to wind them in, they trip out, just like this. They just break out loose as you go to retrieve them in, and then this slides across the bottom of the sand like that, makes it easy to bring in. When you want to cast out again, don't forget, put those on, and with this particular type, you can just nip up that tension here, look, just bend those two together, and they'll cross over the outside of the others, they'll nip into those little recesses in there. So 
bend them in nice and tight. You can actually adjust the tension by squeezing them really tight, then obviously pinch the outside of the lead there nice and tight, and that's nice and rigid. So you've got your bombs. Now, first thing I would do if you're taking up beach fishing for the first time is do not rig up, do not put hooks on, just put a lead on and go and test your rod blank out and see what sort of action you get when you want to cast it out. I said the time isn't right. <laughs> Now, I've tested that rod for casting, but I can also cast even further, more accurately, by using what we call a tailed bomb. That is a bomb with a long tail and a link swivel there. Now, what happens in flight when you start getting real distances you want to cast, the lead's going to be doing this and whiplashing all over the place. If you have that long tail there, it stabilizes it through the airflow as you fly out and it keeps it nice and straight. So for real ultimate distance casting, and of course you can get these with a, with a breakout uh, release as well with wires. Generally you'd use them with a, a long tail with a tail like this with a, a plane bomb, but that gets you a little bit extra distance. Personally, I don't use them that much unless it's really flat calm and I've got to reach, you know, 120 plus yards and I want to reach gullies or somewhere the fish are that I can't normally reach. So that's the practice casting done. Now the simplest rig I find if you're a beginner, you've got your shock leader, you can tie a surgeon's loop, again you can see that loop, or you can tie a blood loop, both of those are on our knots, how to tie knots on YouTube, and then I tie a link in, I ordinarily would use 20, I'm using 30, hopefully you can see it. So it's just a straight pattern oster, which is, it comes on the rod top like that, we have the loop here, we have what's called a snood or a trace, which is the one we put in the bait on, and the lead is just hanging down there. You can put a split swivel, you can put a link swivel. I'll just put a loop on there for now just to show you. If I'm not casting hard with 50 pound, I'll just use a double surgeon's loop here. But better to tie a swivel on, but you know, it's entirely up to you. This is for beginners. So there you go, and then I'm gonna be using ragworm for bait. And that's your regular ragworm. They're not particularly big this time of year, which is the winter. Thin end and fat end, as you can see there. Now, they've got little pinches up the top here. If you don't want to get nipped by the pinches of a big one, I put it straight down the throat there and thread it right around the hook, all the way up, keeping it inside the body. It supports it, and you get to that knot, just pop it over, and that, basically, is ideal for beginners. That's just your hook bait straight as it is with the tail wiggling. Now, you can use any size hook you want really. If you want to catch something, I would think about a fine wire 2.0 Aberdeen is good. But another way you can tip it off is by instead of going through the whole front of the bait like that, you can, you can come in halfway through the body. That way, as you can see in there, his head wiggles and his tail wiggles as well. But that's the way I use for supporting it. But either dig these or buy them. However, if you're on the beach, down here at Hailing, it's like a regular storm beach, they get these for bait and they're also good. I'll show you what they are. Now these are slipper limpets and you can pick these off the beach. They get washed up from offshore where they're sticking onto the seabed like this on big kelp fronds. There's beds and beds of them out at sea. They've recently found some, one of the guys uh, put a cam underwater camera down and found huge beds of these slipper limpets. But obviously in a storm, the pressure on this weed washes them off and they get stuck to the bottom and they get washed up, ground up, pulled off of here and then you'll see the empty shells like this on the beach. However, sometimes on the back of those shells will be other limpets. Now you can get those off and use them for bait as well, and they're free, and they're very good bait after a storm or a blow. Just get something like a blunt table knife or a blunt knife, and you put it in just the edge, just in here, and twist it, and you'll find that it's popped straight off. There is the limpet inside. Let me show you another one so you can see what they're like, that's the, that's the limpet there. Just in that knuckle, just in there, if you just press, you don't have to cut, just press, twist, that's how easy it comes off, and then you get the knife, and you scoop around the edge, 
you can see that I just pushed the pen knife in there, put my thumb on it, scooped the lot out, and there's the bait. Now this bit is soft, this bit is quite tough. Years ago, when we used to flounder fish here, we'd sort all these down and take them all out the shells like this, which is a nice messy job, and then roll them in salt, put them in newspaper and freeze them down. They went really tough then. But you can also use them straight out the shell and put them straight on the hook. Or you can use them as what we call a cocktail bait with a worm tip. So it's another, another little tip for you. Thread these up first. Now, bigger fish will come in on these, bass, cod, other fish as well. You can elasticate them on if you want. This is a big hook to put them on. I'm going to put them on there. But you put those up first and then my tip is get another worm and bolster that on the bottom. It's making what's called a cocktail bait. Yeah, and the worm will help hold those slip Olympics on during the cast. Push it right on up. Now this one I don't pop over the eye of the hook. I just leave it and pull one there. I don't, I'll leave the worm below to hold it. Pull one my hand. There you can see worm on the bottom, slip a limpet on the top, and we're ready to go fishing. And that's the best beginner's guide I can give you. You can have different rigs, ledger rigs, running ledger rigs, but a paternoster, hook at the bottom like that, that's all you need there, and a plain bomb. Remember when you're beach fishing, not only does the tide go out, but it comes in. So when you set your base camp up, make sure you know, you're above the high water line, read your tide tables and also check to see where the beach rubbish is. You can always pick up a line of where the beach is, you know, the last big tide's been. For instance, on the left, where you can probably see it, there's about two or three lines of weed. That's the different heights of the different tides. And now we're getting towards high water now. It's not going to come up much more than this. So let's say you cast out. Now what are you going to do with your rod? Are you going to stand there and hold the rod all day? Well, you might, but I'm not. So you can either lean it on a groin like this. If you've got something like a groin and you don't have any you know, support for your rods, you can just use one of these beach groins. Make sure you get the wind right, the tide right, jam it down, and always make sure you just adjust that drag so the rod doesn't disappear. And what I do, you can throw a little heap of stones over the rod, but all you've got to do is look at the rod top for a bite then. Or you can get yourself a tripod. I've got a, a 25 year old one that I've repaired up here with coat hangers. Did have a rubber feet thing on it, you know, that held the rod rest. This keeps your rods way up off. You don't want sand or grit in your reel. That's one thing you do not want. Don't lay your rod and reel down on the shingle. One piece of tiny sand in there is going to ruin it. Put it up and make sure at the tips that you just space those rods apart a little bit. I try and keep them both the same length. Just like that. I've got the top of mine as well painted white, just with regular white gloss paint, just so when it gets dark, my headlight or my anchor light, you know, my pressure lamp, will actually light the rod top up. Down the other end, same principle. Just slacken those drags a little bit, just so the rod doesn't disappear if you get a big bass come. You know, you don't want to be buying yourself another outfit. And you can always pile a few stones over there if the tide's really pulling. So at least it's got something to pull against and keep your eye on it at all times. Of course, if you didn't want these aluminium ones, and there's some nice ones on the market as well, this isn't one of them, I hasten to add. You can make yourself a cheaper one. Follow me. Now this is the top of the line luxury, totally awesome version. Made out of bits of old hinge, a wing nut, and some bat wood painted white. So all you have to do is make yourself two spars, let's say about four feet, four feet, five feet long, cut them the same length, drill through, washers, wing nut, hinge, and the hinges for the backrest here, that can move up and down, you see it moving up and down like this, and you put the back leg in, ram it in the sand, your rods go in there, and then what I've done down here, I've just tied a piece of 50 pound fishing line to stop those legs, especially the back one, you know, collapsing totally. 
again, you're far better off to buy a nice aluminium shop bought one. But this does the same job, doesn't it? Let's hope it catches a fish. Now, if you're a beginner and it gets dark, I can assure you that generally, generally is the best time to fish. In fact, I don't believe I've really done a lot except 20 years ago or more fishing down Hayling Beach and Flounders. During the daytime it can be deadly, so hopefully at night some fish will move in here. But a lot of marks do really only fish at night. You're going to need illumination. If you're a beginner, the easiest way are these little headlamps. They're dirt cheap and if you put them on, they last with a little bulb. I'm going to say forever because this one will probably go down on me. But they're very, very, very good. If you want more light, then you've got to invest in a pressure lamp, which is this. There's several mark on the market. You know, you can buy this. is uh, <coughs> at least 30 years old. But it's been maintained. Got this one from uh, Tony's Tackle down at Eastbourne, where I used to do a lot of cod fishing off a place they called The Wall. I think the biggest tub is about nine and a half pound off the beach. But as they say, those were in the good old days, not now. But these are pressure lamps, these fill up with paraffin, then you start them with meths, it goes up here, pressurises, heats up, and there's a mantle there that it vaporises and burns in and makes a really, really bright light. When I say really bright, anything from 300 to 500 candle power. You can put a pie and some tin foil on here and cook a pie on the top. So I do like using these, it's a sort of comfort factor really. It's not, my eyes aren't great anyway, but I can use these. But I like to see everything, because with one of these, those white rod tops stand out perfectly in the black pitch night. I put them on a hook, what's called a she shepherd's crook here, which I've had made up, possibly out of steel that's far too heavy. I think it's reinforcing rod for a motorway by the feel of it. But it's got this hook. I spike it on that and it hangs up. Do you know what? The wind doesn't blow it over. Now, here's the tip. Here's the tip, guys. This will give you a 360 degree lighting circle. Well, that's beautiful if all you want to do is see everything around you, but I want to see the bites. So if I put this between me and the rods, it's going to close my pupil down, which is going to be ordinarily wide open in the dark, just like an animal, like a predator. As soon as you put this bright light in there, the pupil goes back down, you don't see so much. So what I do to alleviate that, if you just get some baco foil, just like this, baking foil, fold it in half, and you put it around just two, just the back two of these, that keeps this side dark, throws all the light towards the rods, and because that side's dark, your pupils open up, no headaches, nice and relaxed. Another totally awesome fishing show tip for you. Baco foil on the back of a pressure bag. There we go guys, it's taking a bit of time, it's 3.25 now, we've baited up about two or three times already and looks like we've got on ourselves a little dab here, you can see right through their body dabs, see all their organs, but we haven't blanked, that's the main thing. Now dabs are notorious for loving old manky worms, but you don't really want an old manky worm, do you? So when you get worms after a while, they're gonna make this paper wet. Always change the paper. 
just get some dry paper, tip them out, fresh newspaper, and just fold them over loosely like this. Try and keep them cool, do not leave them in the sun. Do not put them in a plastic bag in the back window of your car. They will not fare well, it will be money thrown away. So keep these baits, which live, don't forget, under the sand, under the sea, which is quite cool in England. Keep your bait cool, keep it out in the sun. With worms, ragworm and lugworm, always keep changing the paper. And if you don't use them all in one session, you can maybe use them the next day. There we go, second fish of the day, it's been really tough fishing, we've got the lamp going now, so they should be on the bite hopefully, just turning dark, so we look at him in the light, there we go, one whiting, now we need his brother, and twice as big, or a cod, or a cod, but that shows you those beginner's tips work, yep, and there, it's a there's one of my long, long nose leads as well, Try and get me that bit of extra distance at night. Simple rig and it works. Nothing too complicated. There we go guys. Our methods work. Small whiting, but you can see him there. That's on that two hook pad and Austin, which I think for beginners is the easiest one to start with, to be honest, because you don't get too many tangles that way. And this one has hooked. Oh, he's fallen off the hook. That was a lucky one, there he is. Now they got, if you can see that in there, I don't know. I'll take him over by the by the big light. You can see the little teeth on me. Okay. Now you should be able to see just there. So we're going to put these back, we don't keep all these white. You can just see the little tiny pin-like teeth on the white in there. Indicating they eat bits of fish, small fish, anything, shrimps, little crabs, they'll eat anything. And we would normally eat whiting, but not really this this size. So I'm going to put him back. Bit of a shock for some sea anglers, but there are more people putting fish back now, which is brilliant. Put him back. There we go guys, it's about our third or fourth whiting, I think it's the fourth one. So they're coming in, it's just got dusk, it's dark now, about 5.30, and they're on the bite. So are we going home yet? No, of course not. This one feels a bit heavier guys. Pretty sure there's a fish on this one. The tide's gone right down now. I think, yep, yeah, I think it's a little one. It's a booty, oh dear. Oh, SH, you know what? It's got me big time. There we go. But at the end of that is a fish. Number six. And not so much of the beginner's guide on beach fishing now. We're all experts suddenly. <laughs> With the simple rigs. Totally awesome fishing. So totally awesome guys. We're getting two at a time now. I think one's hooked on a grip. No he's not. He's no, right they're double hook. That's a nice, not a bad white in that top one. There you go. Whoop, swinging around a bit. Double whiting. And a mess. <laughs> but the fish are on the bite big time now. Yeah. We're definitely not going home now.
you go guys. Another whiting, 19 at the moment. We're out of bait. We've still got a couple of rods out. Hopefully we can get some more on those. But folks, don't write the old boy off yet because I think I've got the bigger one. I'm going to push it right up to the lens and fill it up so he can't get his in there. <laughs> yeah, that's a, couple, that's a nice whiting I've got actually. That is that a good one. one, yeah. So that's it. You've seen us do some basic fishing tips. You've seen it in action. You've seen it work. It's a totally awesome fishing show. Keep it basic. Keep it simple. Get out there. Give it a go like we do. And I'm sure you'll get a few fish. And the saying is, are we going home? And the answer is, yes, because we've got no more bait.